An inflection point has been reached in the proxy war between NATO and Russia over the dead bodies, hundreds of thousands of them, of the people of Ukraine. It's an inflection point on the battlefield, and I'll be talking to a very eminent former CIA operative about what was meant by the British and French cruise missile attack on the headquarters of the Russian Navy in Sevastopol and what Russia will be planning to do in return. But it's an inflection point on the political battlefield too. I honestly believe that when the history comes to be written, that the events in the Canadian Parliament, one of the so-called Five Eyes intelligence grouping, so no one can claim ignorance or stupidity, they are the smartest people in the world, are they not? The events in the Canadian Parliament, presaged actually, bookended by performances by High Heel Jack, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister sometimes of Canada, were of such importance, such a level of grotesque rewriting of history, worse even than von der Leyen's claim, implicit in earlier in the week, that it was Russia that leveled Hiroshima and Nagasaki with nuclear weapons. Certainly she did not name those who had, but by implication, saying that Russia is threatening to do this again, it was easy for the simpleton, and there are some in the world today, mainly in parliaments, it would seem, but also in the general public, to infer that Russia was the power that used nuclear weapons in the past. But this took the biscuit in Canada's Parliament House of Commons, it is called, modelled on the mothership of the British House of Commons. It was a sight so ugly, so literally unbelievable, that many people still are having difficulty coming to terms with it. One million Canadians fought Nazism in the Second World War, and for a country then of 11 million, that was pretty damn impressive recruiting. And they were all recruits there to fight Hitler in Europe of their own volition because they believed in it. One million Canadians out of 11 million. 100,000 Canadians were either killed or maimed fighting the Hitlerites on the European continent. That's 10% of all of the, their soldiers were casualties, dead or wounded. Again, a level of sacrifice, of volunteers, which is something to be proud of, something to enshrine in your heart, something to guide your every attitude into the future when dealing with great geopolitical issues. I've visited the Canadian war graves in Normandy. 14,000 Canadian soldiers landed on Juneau Beach and faced, funnily enough, SS troops on Juneau Beach, which accounted for the relatively savage level of casualties suffered by those with the bad luck to have landed on that particular beach. The SS took some of the Canadians prisoner on Juneau Beach and tortured them to death, tortured them and then entirely in defiance of the laws of war, dispatched them with a firing squad. The SS were like that. I thought any schoolboy knoweth that, but not apparently the members of the House of Commons in Canada. Because this week, in a paroxysm of fervor, whipped up by the orchestrator, High Heel Jack, I call him High Heel Jack because he actually walked around in the Canadian Parliament in ladies' high-heeled shoes, in a 
protest against violence against women. No, I don't know either. High Heel Jack had whipped the Canadian Parliament into a paroxysm of fervor for Zelensky and the Ukrainian cause. So much, no surprise. Trudeau has been in the vanguard of the war party since this whole affair began. Indeed, if you calibrate the levels of belligerence against both Russia and China, Canada is right there in the very... It's funny because no Canadian is going to go and fight Russia or China. It's funny because High Heel Jack would have absolutely no intention of putting on a tin hat himself or picking up a rifle himself. He's an effete poppin jay, if you get my drift, at least according to his former missus. High Heel Jack is a frontline backseat soldier of the Ukrainian cause. So it caused me no surprise that he was ranting and raving about the war. But what did take me by surprise, and will, I think, cost him dearly in political popularity in his own country, will cost the members of parliament involved dearly. What will live on in history as a day of infamy in Canada was what happened next. In this paroxysm of fervor, the Speaker of the Canadian Parliament, no less, the Speaker reading from notes, drew attention to the presence in the audience of a Ukrainian hero, he said, a Canadian Ukrainian hero, he said, who had fought the Russians during World War II. Now, as they rose as one man and woman to applaud Yaroslav Hunka, aged 98, did the words fought the Russians during World War II not ring even the smallest of bells in the thickest of skulls amongst these maniacs on their feet, applauding with North Korean levels of vivacity this man who fought the Russians in World War II, did it not occur to them that that meant he was a member of the Nazi army fighting the Russians during World War II? Did it not occur to them that they were on the same side as the Russians in World War II? That Canada, that Britain, that America, and Russia were allies during World War II. So how can you feverishly applaud a man who the Speaker of the House introduces as someone who fought the Russians during World War II? Even if they didn't know that he was Yaroslav Hanka of the 14th Division of the same SS that murdered Canadian prisoners in the sand dunes on the beach of Juneau in Normandy in 1945, even if they didn't realize that the Galician SS, of which Yaroslav was a member and from which is a fugitive, from war crime charges, did it not occur to them that this man was therefore a part of war crimes almost beyond imagination? Not beyond mine, because 
I saw Einsatzgruppen, Hitler's Eastern Holocaust on Netflix, before they buried it so deeply that you'll be very lucky to find it on Netflix if you try to after this show. I saw what the Galician SS, of which Mr. Hunker was a member, I saw what they did. I saw the massacre, hundreds and thousands of Jews, of Poles, of partisans, of Ukrainian citizens that would not collaborate with Hitler. I mean up close and personal, I mean murdering them in pits, on video, on video, climbing on the bodies and murdering them, anything that moved in the pit, murdered, executed, who by, not by the Germans, but by their Ukrainian collaborators, their fellow members of Hitler's SS. So what do we have here? We have a Commonwealth Parliament. We have a North American state. We have a member of NATO. We have one of the five eyes. We have one of the leaders of the war party in the world whose parliament orgiastically applauded in a standing ovation a member of a member of Hitler's SS. And so every one of those liberals with a small L Every one of those liberals out there, if they still have the Ukrainian twibbon on their profiles, if they are still shilling for Zelensky and the regime in Kiev, I want you to think about what I have just said. And I want patriotic Canadians I want the children and the grandchildren of the 100,000 dead and wounded Canadian soldiers who volunteered to fight Hitler in Europe from 1939, not 1941, Uncle Sam, 1939 until 1945. I want every one of those children and grandchildren and now great-grandchildren of all those Canadian war graves in Normandy and elsewhere, of all those one million Canadians who went to fight Hitler, I want them to hold high heel Jack Trudeau to account. I want them to demand from their members of parliament, why did you give a standing ovation because I saw you on television. Not a single member of parliament did not get to their feet. I want all those Canadians to demand of their members of parliament why they did this, why they desecrated the war graves of their own fathers and forefathers, why they licked the spittle of a Nazi war criminal, mass murderer, genocide enabler, Jew killer. I want every Canadian, every loyal, decent, patriotic Canadian to demand an explanation from their Prime Minister and the parliamentary acolytes on both sides of the House that committed this excrescence in Canada this week. Let me turn to King Charles in Versailles. King Charles, like High Heel Jack Trudeau, is in the grip of a twin zealotry. He has other strings to his bow, but 
the main parts of this twin zealotry held by Trudeau, by Sunak, by Starmer, by Macron, by Schultz, and by King Charles. Our so-called climate change and war in the Ukraine. Now, these others that I mentioned are elected politicians and are therefore entitled to express their point of view, however awful it is. But you, Your Majesty, are elected by no one. You have no right at all, whether on foreign soil or domestic, to be weighing in with your heavy and expensive royal crown on matters of political controversy which divide your people, your subjects, as you like to call them. Many of your subjects think that this net zero lark is a hoax, is a con. In fact, so strong is that feeling in the country that little Rishi Sunak has begun to beat a path to the policy first enunciated by the Workers' Party of Britain, which I lead. He has you turned, rode back on the crazy commitment to net zero coal and penury for the British people by 2030. And if I'm any judge, he's going to make these matters an election issue in the general election he's going to call next May on the same day as the local elections. Write it down. Mark my words. So this matter of national controversy, King Charles, is not one into which you can venture. At least not if you are a constitutional monarch. And if you're not, Versailles was a pretty risky place to venture forth on the divine right of kings. And many of your subjects, do not share your declaration that Ukraine stands for the same values as us. Because, frankly, sire, they do not. Not the Ukrainian war criminal in the Canadian Parliament, not the Ukrainian midget, running around in his fatigues from one parliament to the next, filling his bag of money from the taxpayers in all countries. Not the Azov battalion, not those erecting statues to Bandera, the leader of the Hitlerites in the territories occupied by the Nazis in the Second World War. No, sire. My grandfathers fought in your grandfather's army all the way from El Alamein to Monte Cassino and beyond against those values, against the values held so dear by that regime in Kiev. Fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be a bumpy night. It's the mother of all talk shows.